Floss Tube and Instagram friends. My name is Kim and this is Floss Tube number 35. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm kgoldman63 on Instagram. So welcome or welcome back. I have a lot of stitching to share with you again today. I have some finishes, uh, progress, new starts, plans, lots of good stitchy chit chat. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, I want to share Mary McGee as my first finish with you, but I have some Instagram friends who have um, also completed Mary. So this is Robin. And then we have Rayleigh. Beautifully framed. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you, ladies. Okay, so let me go ahead and share with you the chart of Mary McGee by Needlework Press. And I did stitch, and I, I got this chart at the attic in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, I did stitch Mary on the call for fabric of, I think it's 40 count Havana, uh, but I did make some substitutions in the flosses in the way of, I didn't use all of the silks. Uh, I switched to some over dyed cottons. Uh, Mary is also in another thrifted frame that I cut down to size. And I have a video talking about how I do that. This is one of the profiles um, that I really enjoy. And I see quite often, uh, the problem is it's a veneer. And so I do have to be really careful. It often will chip. And so I think going forward, I will have to take Karen's suggestion of putting a little bit of painter's tape um, over the area that I'm going to cut just so that it can help protect from the, the chipping. So that's Mary. Let's see, set her back here. All right, then we have a Quaker sewing tray by With Thy Needle and Thread. And I did make a few changes on this one as well. I changed the color of the birds to be blue and one of the little motifs up here. Uh, I didn't want there to be quite so much brown, which is the Palomino is the call for. And I just used some of the other flosses. I, the blue I, I totally chose on my own, but. I moved some of the other flosses around. So here is, uh, let's see, 37 Count Wild Honey by Legacy Linens. And I did use the DMC conversion for some of the, the lighter greens that you see in there, just because I felt that there wasn't as much of a difference between um, the two. I think it's Oscar and then Sage. And so instead of the Sage, I used the DMC in the rest of it. Um, this is a plastic frame. And it's just, this was how it came, standard size. But I did a lot of painting on this frame, trying to find the right color. Um, I ended up just using a, a acrylic uh, little tube of, you know, the folk art paint, I believe it is, and just a brown red, and then a coat of the decor wax over top of it, just to antique it a little bit. And I think it came out, it's, it's just mimicking the tray that you saw, which why I didn't just start there. Um, I think I was afraid I wouldn't have the right red. I don't know. But that's my uh, Quaker sewing trick. All right, then we have uh, something I was, you know, super excited about. And a lot of you have finished Mary as well. Um, Mary Amelia's Bird by Quaint Rose Needle Arts, who is at Macy. She's on Instagram and on FlossTube. And this is her finish. This is exactly the clock from Hobby Lobby that I showed you the SKU number for it last time. I got it at 50% off and um, wanted to do exactly what Macy had done for her finish. So let me show you what I did there. And this is on 40 count, let's see if I can get a good, all the lighting in here. 40 count hog bristle by Fox and Rabbit with all the call for DMCs. I did not put obviously the uh, the name at the bottom, but other than that, exactly as charted. Now in the back, let me show you how I kind of prop this in here. And I want to, these are the, uh, the brackets that come in the back. You'll see I put two of them back in, but I saved one to show you. And you just have to separate them by pulling them out this way. If you pull them out, they'll come out of the back. And I kept the glass in here. I don't usually put glass but I did keep the glass and I put, I don't know what these are for or called. Um, they're just little like hard acrylic bumpers. Uh, you can use them under glass and different things. But anyway, I put these, I put the glass in, in the front and then I put the bumpers around the edges, just, just a few of them. And then I put my stitch piece and smushed it up so that my stitching is not actually touching the glass. 
I ran a gathering thread around the outside and just pulled that tight in order to get my round finish. And then as I said, I wedged a piece of foam core to just hold that. And as, as well as the brackets are sitting like on top of the glass um, to help to hold the glass in place. So it's not going anywhere. And I, I kept it open in order to be show to show this to you. And then in the future here, I can just cut another piece of uh, scrapbooking paper and, and put that on a piece of cardboard. And that will cover up the back if, if the back is ever going to show. So that's my Mary Amelia. And while we're at it, I have another finish, but let me show you what I did with my Anna Omen because one clock is great, but more is even better. And so I had finished Anna last time and I was looking for a frame because she's this finishes up in a square and you can find a nice square frame, standard size. But as I was rearranging my craft room for the night time, I asked my husband to help me put something in the garage. And while we're out there, he was kind of, um, teasing me a little bit about opening up the cupboards and saying, goodness, with all of the thrifted things you have in here, you could open your own booth at some sort of a craft or antique mall. But it did remind me that I had more clocks. I have a lot of thrifted clocks. I don't know why. There were just certain things that, that I end up thrifting a lot. And I had this clock in there. And I just took the back off and pulled out. I, there were some screws attached to the top and bottom. And I just pulled out, unscrewed them and pulled out the clock workings. Um, I did have to pry off. There's a, you know, might, there might be something holding the glass in or the clock face in. And so there are different things that I just pried with my um, screwdriver. I, pry, I I think I had to pry off a, a piece of wood on the top there. And then I fit, fit the foam core. Um, you can see that there's no extra fabric on this side. I cut this really tight on the side, but I fit the foam core to wedge in there pretty nicely so that, you know, it doesn't fall out. And I will do the same thing. There's a back to this. I will finish painting um, the back piece and put it on. This is again, it was oak. So I did a light sanding um, with just a 220 grit sandpaper to take the finish. There's a like a little finish on the top of the oak. And I took the finish off, took um, black acrylic um, paint, again, just those little tubes of craft paint and painted it um, a coat of black and then a coat of the brown decor wax on top. And this gives me this nice color that I like. And uh, Anna fits in there perfectly. So that was a lot of fun. You know, this, this clock finish is not, I certainly didn't think of it first. A lot of us have done it. You see inspiration on uh, Instagram and different floss tubers. I know uh, Lisa from Lisa Abbey Needleworks. She did one several years ago. It's fabulous. Um, I had already had, uh, this is, um, from the Friendship In Friendship's Way by Blackbird Designs, Welcome Dear August. And I had had him completed and ready to go. And initially, I thought I was going to just put a magnet and put him on top of the clock. And once I started doing all these, I was like, oh, why didn't I just take the clock piece out? And he'll fit in there perfectly. So he's just on a piece of like uh, foam core or mat board, I can't remember. And um, I have, I also have a lot of things in the garage um, that I can put on the top here handles. I mean, I, I save a lot of things. I thrift a lot of things. So I have to go dig around and find one. So I'll put a handle on the top of him. And then one of the future uh, plans that I have, I might as well show that while we're here. So I've been meaning to stitch Chubby Bird for a really long time, but I just can't quite get him in, get him in the rotation. But I did the measurements and one of the things, again, I have a lot of, like I said, thrifted clocks, a lot of these, they, I think that they're good size for tiered trays. You can paint them, um, leave it black, whatever. And so I had several of these and one of them I'd already taken apart, right? I took everything out. I took the, uh, the little feet off, but I've saved them so that I'll glue them back on. So I had to take all the innards out, but this measures up so that Chubby Bird at three inches by three inches will fit absolutely perfectly in here. So this is a future plan. And I had one more. This is a red clock that is perfectly lovely in red, but I had actually chalk painted it. And I thought, well, I, you know, this will be something I'll be keeping my eyes open for another finish to be able to go in there. So lots of fun ideas. Make sure you're thrifting for those clocks. Uh, all right, so let's see, what else did I finish? I did one more here, I believe is my, another strawberry from the Blackbird Designs Deck the Halls. And I have already done three. So this is my fourth one. I'll still have a couple more to go. Uh, it's not all the way finished because I kind of got stuck. I haven't decided exactly what I want to do on the top. 
Um, so I've just left the gathering thread there. It's been secured and, you know, tied off, um, filled with a little bit, what did I put in here? I think it's a little bit of rice, <laughs> a little bit of polyfill. Um, I didn't get a perfectly, you know, I mean, it looks pointy, but it'll bend. So, which it's fine. It doesn't bother me, but I stitched this on my first stitchy retreat. I actually went on a, a lovely little, um, get together with some women. It was a lot of fun. It, it was my first, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you may not know, I'm actually not very uh, comfortable with large crowds of people or new people or parties. Um, I'm actually, um, anyway, I stepped outside of my comfort zone. I went, I had a fabulous time and I hope that it'll make me a little less anxious in the future to perhaps go to another retreat. We shall see. So that was a lot of fun because so now let me in in the way of that my friend Amy Mrs. Flossie I'm going to link the video below because she did a wonderful little recap of our uh, weekend and um, she shows the area that we were in it was in uh, Sonoma Arizona so there was a trip to the attic again I flew in and Amy picked me up and I got to go to the attic and um, she did we did a little kind of mini um, whip we just did show and tell the things we stitched on while we were there. And then she also did one with um, uh, Jean Lee and Carolyn from the attic where they showed their, the things that they were stitching on and brought. And so it was a lot of fun. And I'm just going to go ahead and let Amy tell you all about it. And uh, she does all the fancy pictures and stuff, which I don't do. So, okay. So that was a start and a finish on my retreat. And I think I'll have a few more. Uh, some of the whips that I have are things that I worked on while I was there as well. So... I think that's what we're ready to do now. I do have my list. I haven't even looked at it yet. Um, I think we're ready to talk about whips. Those are all of my finishes. Yes. So let's go ahead and do that next. Um, one of the things that I've been doing, this is my second month of trying to complete uh, the stockings, the um, stitching these with my friend Merritt, and a lot of you are, are joining us. Um, so it's the BBD Christmas Stocking SAL. And I am on the, my second stocking, we're going to do one a month for the five months because there's five and hoping to finish them early enough to have them fully finished by Christmas. So this is the one I have to, I'm going to have to bust a move on this here pretty quick if I hope to have it finished by the end of the month. But this is the one I'm working on. And I added, I, you know, I think I finished the house and a little bit more doodads here and there, some whatnots. Um, yeah, this is on 32 count raw natural and I am using uh, the sulkies for the first time and I'm liking that's working out really well on the 32 count because I prefer stitching with one strand and that gives me the ability to go ahead and do that and still get pretty good coverage. So I'm, I'm enjoying that. All right, um, let's see what's next. What's on top? Then let's talk about my uh, Dutch Beauty. So I got quite a bit actually done on Dutch Beauty. This is another uh, Sal, uh, Dutch Beauty with Friends, S-A-L. And I'm stitching this with a Shelly, It's Only Stitching, and Brenda Holzman on Instagram. And again, a lot of you have joined in. So thank you so much. Susan Stanley, A Stitch in Time. I know she's working on it as well. Um, so I'm only stitching. This This could actually fall under the hashtag, I'm just stitching the bird. <laughs> So I am stitching this portion here and I got a little bit stumped because, you know, it's funny when I look at this, I see colors that are very uh, muted. But now as I'm looking a little closer, I got stuck because the blue was very bright and the purple was very bright. And I chose a fabric. This is 36 count for a while there. I thought it was 40, but this is 36 count caramel by um, Fiber on a Whim. And it's a lot more, you know, the um, like a olivey green. And so the colors were too bright. Do I have some floss there? Sorry. The colors were too bright when I got to, I was doing the, the reeds and, and such here. And I had to stop and I'm going to have to change out the colors. And I just, I wasn't up to doing that at that moment. I did change out the color I'm using um, for the grass or the, uh, the marsh area there. And I did, if you'll notice, there's a slight change in the one color of this. This is either a swan or a um, pelican, they say, and they, su they suppose, but I always call it a swan. And I changed the one color on purpose uh, just because I thought it would be fun. I know it's not an ugly duckling, but I just thought that would be fun. 
So I finished again on the retreat. I finished all of like this because it was nice just fill in. I had had it outlined and I filled in all of this and some of this and then I did the rest when I got back. And I am really loving this. And I would have gone a lot farther. I sat down to stitch one evening, but like I said, I ran into a bit of a challenge with the colors. And I'm just gonna have to um, pull the DMCs and pick a more um, muted color in the same, you know, with the same family. Start start with the, the purple and find a more muted purple. So that's my Dutch Beauty. Then I had some more progress on my Oh, where is Isabel? Uh-oh, did Isabel, I have Isabel Howie, and I worked on her, she's here somewhere. Hold, oh, there we go, I found her. So Isabel Howie, 1795 by Priscilla's Pocket. Again, uh, another chart I saw stitched up, the model at the attic, fell in love with the colors, it's just so beautiful, uh, a Scottish sampler, and I, worked on, let's see, that's the back. There we go. I worked on the uh, the bottom portion there while we were there and I finished up a bit more of the bird and this is on 40 count vintage exemplar by Lakeside Linens. And I know Lakeside is very difficult to come by. I've mentioned before that I've had a lot of this in my stash for a number of years. And, um, but there are a lot of beautiful fabrics out there that that will be easy to make some substitutions to to stitch her on. So uh, another one I just I, I know I love it I keep saying that but I do. Okay um, then I also took um, let's see where are you I also took red and green carnation sampler by Samplers Remembered another one that I saw uh, this first time I saw this was um, a country samplers in Spring Green, Wisconsin, uh, on their um, email that I sub I'm subscribed to, and I saw it come up, and it was a schoolgirl sampler society, I guess. It comes up as a, as a special one of those things. I'm not in any of the clubs, so I saw it, fell in love with it, couldn't get it. <laughs> when I saw it come out, it was like, oh, yes, 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 and I was very excited to start it. Um, you know, Raw Raw's is it Rachel? I think Ra Ra's Stitching Realm, something like that on, on uh, I'll try to link below on uh, Floss Tube. She's stitching her as well. And so before I could get her, I would watch her progress. And she started at the top where she's doing the fun carnations. But um, as you can see, I cut it very, very, very close on my fabric margins because I just don't have a lot of this. Again, this is, I believe this is 40 count vintage meadow rue, one of my favorite fabrics that I just, you know, I only have a few pieces left, like tiny, tiny pieces. And I just have to do the most with what I have left because I don't know that I'll ever get any more. <laughs> it's all right. So I think I'm using all the called for on her so far. Yeah, I think I, there weren't very many. Um, and so I'm using all the called for colors. It's just over dyed cottons. Loving working on her. You know, someone asked me, and I forgot, I'm so sorry, last time I even had a note, but I forgot to talk about the, um, they asked me about the Q-snaps. So, and I've mentioned this many a time, the reason I have, so I'm gonna show you, I know that Q-snaps, you can slide, which is preferable. If you can slide it off, that's the way to take your snaps on and off. Sometimes they are super, super tight and I can't slide them and I don't wanna rip my linen or you know anything like that. So I will, in those cases, I will, put my fingers one on either side, you know, my thumbs on the top and my fingers under the edge, and I will pull it, just pull it gently up and off that way. Um, like I said, if you can slide it, that's better. I think it's better for the Q-snap, so you're not spreading it out. Um, but when I choose to put fabric, so this is very tight, my fabric is very tight, and I sew on just scrap pieces of cotton or felt or batting, I mean, whatever it is you have. And I sew those onto the side and I decide how much I need to sew on because I, I'll lay it over the top of my Q-snap and see how much fabric I need extra so that they reach to the clamps. And that's how I decide. I do a simple um, zigzag on the fabric to prevent it from fraying because at the end I'm going to, most of the time I'm going to take some scissors or a seam ripper and cut this fabric off if I have enough that I don't need it. Um, framing this, I will leave this on because it'll give me a lot of ability to pull the fabric from the sides and pull it tight and wedge it as I'm stretching it before I pin. 
and more than likely I'll just trim it a little bit and leave, I'll have to leave this on because it'll be a really tight fit to my foam core. But that's how I um, affix the fabric and, and use the Q-snaps. I like doing the Q-snaps because I use my Lowry, which is just that floor stand that allows me to do two-handed stitching. One of the things I did do, so back to the retreat very quickly, was knowing I was going to be stitching. That's, you know, it, that's all it really was, was just a little gathering. There weren't, there weren't um, any classes or teaching or anything like that. It was really just to sit and stitch and visit and eat and stitch and visit. <laughs> I was concerned because I don't like to, um, I don't use the sewing method and I don't like to poke and stab, you know, one handed up and back on the cue snap or in a hoop or whatever. And I was really concerned about well, how am I going to enjoy my stitching while I'm there because that was really important to me. And so I made, um, I had made one before and I just took the one, the pieces that I had and I cut it down and I made a PVC pipe type of a lap stand and I made it at different heights. I made one so that in case I'm sitting in the bed stitching, it was a little bit taller. I made one so that if I'm sitting at a table, I had shorter pieces. I ended up being able to sit on a couch, nice and comfy, crisscross applesauce, and with my lap, just holding the, the frame on my lap. And I had a clip on light. Um, I also had, oh, and I and I had a um, the idea that I have, a magnifier lens right with the light that I usually pull down and I have to look through the magnifier lens because I can't see anything at all anything I'm stitching on I have to use glasses or magnification and actually I use both magnification and glasses but I thought well I'm going to try to get some stronger glasses and see if that works better because again I won't have my my light with me right the magnifier with the light and all that so I was going to get some glasses and I didn't realize that the you know higher the magnification the harder to get so um, I was thinking, well, I brought some threes, but they're super uncomfortable, the nose piece and such. So my friend Amy had these and she got these from Fat Quarter Shop. They're a 3.0, just reading glasses. If you go onto the website and type that in, 3.0 reading glasses, I think they should come up. And they have different strengths as well, but I really needed the more powerful one. And do you know that with these, I don't have to use my magnifier anymore. Like I can just wear the glasses. I do need really good light. Now that's always essential. So I still use my um, lamp for the light and it makes a big difference. So you need really good light, really good magnification. And, but that was a really, uh, it was a pleasant surprise to realize that now I, I'm not going to have to just look through that little narrow um, lens. So thank you, Amy, for that. I'd like to get some more, I think, in the future just to have on hand. And, and uh, it, it, it saved my ability to sit there and stitch. And even when my light died, because I'm going to have to get a new light, Carolyn had an extra light. So thank you, Carolyn, <laughs> for coming to the rescue because I can't stitch in the dark. So, okay, so that was um, my red and green carnation sampler. Now, while we're also, let's just go ahead. I'm going to, these might be a little bit loud, so pardon me for just a quick minute. While we were sitting there stitching, and I'm just stitching away, head down, not even thinking, and we're just chatting. And I, we were over, Amy and I were over visiting um, Carol and Carolyn and Jean Lee, all from the attic, and we were over in their cabin and sitting and stitching with them. And somehow the conversation came up. You know Jean, she's stitching on her red sampler. And you know, one of the many, and you know Carolyn, she had a couple of, uh, one I'm gonna share with you in a minute, and then she was also on a red sampler, a new start. And so we were talking about red sampler, and I sat without even thinking, I said, you know, I, I'm not stitched a red sampler yet. Like I don't even have one started. And off to my left, I could hear, it was almost like there was a gust of wind from the gasp that came from both Amy and Jean. I, and I think I stopped stitching and looked up and looked home and they were just, their faces were just like shock in shock. It was so, and I was like, uh, did I just say that right out loud? It was so funny uh, and they forgave me and I now have a red sampler. So we're good. I am complying with one of the laws. I think that's one of Laura's laws as well. So we're all good and I'm gonna show that to you in a minute. So uh, let me show, actually let me show that to you now. So Jean was stitching on this particular sampler and we all did a lot of show and tell. You know, we'd show everything we brought and things we were stitching on. And she passes this around and I looked at it, I took one look at it and I was like, oh my gosh. These are the most beautiful alphabet letters that I that I have ever seen. They just it just struck me, and she's doing it on um, an uneven like a uh, was it like a fifty three sixty? It was it, you know it was high count, but it was something uneven. But anyway, 
Uh, so it's tiny and beautiful and amazing. And I took one look and I just, I, I just fell in love. And I said, what is this? And she said, oh, it's, so this is one of Jean's um, private collection. This is one of her samplers that she owns and it has been reproduced. And I'm talking about Ursilia's sampler. And it is actually uh, at the attic um, the original, but it's kind of in a cabinet and there are things on top of it. So you don't really see it. And it's just the original. So Jean has not finished stitching it, um, herself, although she's made some pretty good progress. And I think she's been energized now to pick it up again and fell in love with it all over again. Um, but, um, you can see, oh yes, yeah, so you can see the original at the attic. And then Jean Lee, on that video that Amy does, Jean shows her uh, progress. And now she's stitching it on a, a warmer fabric. Um, I originally had thought that's what I was going to do as well. But when I went back and I, I picked out, I wanted to stitch it in silk because stitching with silk is a lot less knots. You don't get as many knots in your floss, right? And I just thought I want to enjoy this and I want it to be, you know, fabulous. And so I decided to go for the silk. I bought a couple of skeins. I did have this already. This is 40 Count Antique Lace by Seraphim Fabrics. And because the floss, which is Tulip by Belle Swa, is more of a blue red, um, I decided I thought that looked good on this color fabric and I had a big piece of it. So this is why I chose um, instead of the warmer color for my first red sampler. Can you see that? I think if I get on, get in nice and close and show you there's some variegation, but not so much that I can't still stitch uh, in a row, you know, three or five stitches and then back for the most part, which is how I prefer versus um, one stitch at a time. There are times where, you know, the letters, um, obviously I have to stitch that way, but I've been trying to put in a little bit, not every day, but, um, you know, I'll put in few, a few and then set it aside and then pull in a few. So I got all the way across the top and uh, I just, you can call the attic and if you'd like to stitch this as well, right? There's the bird, a couple of birds actually, the swan and these beautiful alphabets. It's just, it's so pretty. All right, so that was another one I worked on at the retreat. Um, let's see what else. I think that was everything for the retreat uh, stitching. So when I got back, I made a little bit more progress on one. I, um, I haven't worked on this in a little while, but my, because it's not summer, I, you know, I plan on having it done to be able to display for the summer. So I wasn't in any hurry, but my Midsummer Song by Luminous Fiber Arts. And I filled in the uh, pot right here and I started on the B. And so let me go ahead and show you that one. This is on 36 count uh, Beach Brew by r and &R. And I'm using all of Misty's called for flosses, which is the mixture of overdyes and DMC. So there's my B. Yeah, I think that's all it did. Pretty sure. All right, so I'm really enjoying that. Um, let's see what else. Then I pulled out my M plus A by Needlework Press. I do love Needlework Press. And these colors, I mean, and this is on display at the attic as well. I mean, it's just, oh, it's just gorgeous. I wanted to show you one of the things that I do when I stitch. Um, because I stitch on my um, Q-snap and I, you know, with hands free and stuff, I magnet my chart right above. So one of the things that I think helps me in the way of efficiency and all of that is, I can look right at my stitching and my chart is right above. So I, my eyes only have to go a quick, and if I had to look away and then look back, I think I personally would struggle a lot more. But some of these charts, let's see if I can show you what I do. Some of these charts, so I make a working copy because I like to mark off so I don't lose my place. And especially when there's um, two pages, three pages, whatever, I don't like to worry about the grade area. So I tape them together. But one of the things I do, the charts can be quite large and unwieldy. <laughs> so as I finish stitching portions, I will cut that portion off and then just throw it away as I'm done with it. And by the time I get to the end, it makes me laugh because at some points I have, you know, the very end, I might just have this little tiny piece of chart left that I have to stitch. It's like, oh, I'm all done. <laughs> that works really well for me. So it just makes it more manageable. Sometimes I won't uh, use the taped portion. I'll, I'll only stitch the bottom until I get to the middle and then I have to go and, and tape it together to keep working. And then I'm all good to go. and. My chart is uh, nice and, and kept nice and neat. 
So let me show you the progress I made. I only picked uh, this one up a couple of days ago and stitched on her and just, um, I was doing the border. I, this was another one of my NYE 12 by 12 starts for that where we stitched for only an hour on, and then stopped and started something else. And I only had these first two things finished. So um, I was able to, now this is where you'll see I've uh, edged with the zigzag stitch just this morning very quickly because I only cut it off last night. I'm very close as well. I did measure, 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 and um, I have to sew on the extra piece of fabric now. I'll, I'll have to still do that. But this is a 40 count hog bristle by Fox and Rabbit. Absolutely love this fabric. This is the, uh, one of the extra pieces I had from when I stitched Mary Amelia's bird. Oh, and really quick back to, um, if you watch Macy's latest video um, for her on her floss tube, she has a new release and she only gave us a sneak peek. She teased us a little bit because she said she wants to have it fully framed and look absolutely fabulous before she's ready to reveal. And so of course the portion that she shows is another fabulous bird. And uh, so Nikki, Nick's days, uh, I'm gonna, I'll link her below as well on floss tube. She has finished Mary Amelia and she, she messaged me and she said, I think we're gonna have to do another sell. <laughs> we're just stitching that bird. And I said, absolutely. I said, but I am gonna wait and see because if the entire design may be something that I want to stitch the whole thing, but the bird is an absolute must. So huh, Macy, I think it was a couple of weeks before she's gonna do the total reveal, but I highly suggest if you want to stitch Mary Amelia's bird, you know, really you should be watching Macy anyway, <laughs> but go check out Quaint Rose Needle Arts, her very latest video. Okay. So, um, and I also, very quickly, we're gonna backtrack for a real quick second. I'm so sorry, I'm a little out of order here, but I do want to share with you, uh, this is Bridget's, uh, her finishes on the BBD stocking sale. And you can see she used the same piece of fabric, doing the same thing I am, stitching them upside down. But she sent me some up close pictures where she just took it to a whole new level, Bridget. I mean, with all those beads, and um, she changed up some of the colors. This is the one I'm working on right now. I love that pink that you used. It's a little more pink of a red in the house. Look at this. She did a fun green on the top of that heart. Oh my gosh. And so many of you, I, you know, I, I try to share a little bit every week um, and hopefully I haven't forgotten. So, right? Absolutely gorgeous. I think that's all of them. I actually had one more um, you know what? We'll go ahead and save it for next time. Okay. So back on track. So when I got back, uh, it was time for us to start. I had told you about this the last time that, that, uh, friends of mine, we were all going to start a new, um, stitch together, something new from the sewing club book. So this is Merrick Crawford from the Just Because Buzz and Celeste from Celeste Creates and April Heirlooms from Instagram. And we all started, um, the, from the sewing club, we all started the hashtag BBD tiny treetops SAL. And I, when we started, I was joking that mine, because I'm only doing a portion and you'll see in a minute, I, I was afraid they were going to kick me out of the cell. <laughs> I said, ladies, I said, I'm doing like hashtag very tiny treetops because I'm not stitching the whole thing. Um, I'm not stitching the border. I don't, I actually got to a place now where I'm not sure what else I'm going to do. You'll see that this uh, motif is repeated on both sides and then this one is on the ends. And I just took one of them out. I, I have a little bit more fabric. Um, so what I'm going to do is, you know, leave enough to finish it into a drum. So I may add a bit more. Um, my friend Shelly, it's only stitching. If you check out her uh, post on the under the hashtag or on Instagram, she, under uh, she, I'll I'll link her below. But she did some of the other um, same designs from the same book, but she took some of the other flowers. So I believe she took this one and knocked off a bit of the bottom to bring it a little bit down. And she probably did this one here. And she added those into the design as well so that it's not, you know, if you're gonna make it a drum, I didn't, the reason I changed it is because I didn't want the same flower to meet at the back of the drum. And um, so I'm not sure what else I'm adding. There will be some more. There's some more whatnots and doodads, <laughs> motifs. But I got to a place where I had to make more decisions and I just wasn't ready to do that. So this is 36 count um, Up in the Attic by Fox and Rabbit. Just a little scrap piece I had left over. So I'm going to use uh, as much as I can of that. And did I do, I changed some of the colors on this. Again, I didn't want the, I didn't use the pecan or pecan that it calls for in the basket. And I changed it up to cinnabar. 
so that I had a, more of a pink basket. And I think the rest are all the called for colors, right? Or did I change the bird? Was the bird already blue? Yes, the bird was already blue, so I didn't change that. So that was my last new start. Let me make sure, I don't have any more charts around me, so that's a good sign that I haven't forgotten anybody. Okay, let me set all this to the side. Uh, I do have a couple of um, purchases from when I was at the attic. We were there recently, so I had done a lot of shopping then, but I did pick up, now if you watch that video that I mentioned, you will see Carolyn has a beautiful start on this Hands Across the Sea samplers chart that you can get at the attic. And so Sarah Fletcher, 1841, she's going to be, I have to kit her up, I'm going to use the DMCs, and I have to decide whether I'm gonna stitch the border. I know, I, it's beautiful. I, I may, uh, I was also wondering whether I would just stitch the top and bottom and make it, you know, a thin take off the side and just do the top and bottom. But Carolyn will stitch the whole thing. It's fabulous. Watch her progress. And um, I also picked up my first piece of color and cotton. I've never been able to um, get any of this. They had some there. And so this is, let's see what this is called. Mm, oatmeal, 36 count oatmeal. I, and as I said, I'm not stitched on it, so I, I usually would do 40, but Amy had a piece that she was stitching on and she had 40 and she said, it seemed like a bit of a tighter weave. So if you've got a lot of you know experience with color and cotton, maybe you'll know, but if it's a tighter weave, like uh, picture this plus, I will do the 36 instead of the 40, just to make it a little easier as long as I'm still gonna get good coverage. And I prefer, I like both of them, but yes, 36 is that, you know, like Fox and Rabbit, I prefer 40 because, um, it's just seraphim, I prefer 40. Um, it's one of those things where it's always the question to use one or two strands on 36. And I always say you do what you prefer. If you want it to be thicker, fuller coverage, then you would want to use two strands. But if you don't mind it to be a little bit less, you, I only like to stitch with one. So I always stitch with one on 40 and 36. Um, I also have some fun new starts coming up. So let me show those to you here quickly. Um, this was another thing I purchased. I've wanted to stitch Mary Lindley for a very long time. And I think this is an older chart. And I think at the time, 2016, I think it was the over one. I was like, oh, well, I don't want to do over one. So I just, I wouldn't stitch the chart. But now um, all I'm going to do is bring the border down. It's actually, it's perfect. I already counted. Everything works perfectly. I'll bring the border down and um, I won't have to stitch the over one. And I will stitch the border. Uh, and I, I just, I love her and I've already pulled, I pulled, I, I got some of the, um, called for Gloriana's, I think it was, um, silks, no, Belsois, sorry, Classic Color Works Belsois. So I got a few of those and I have a couple in my stash. I'm also going to start, um, a Robin's Discovery. I think I finally found my fabric and I put, picked up some flosses while I was there. And this is one I've been wanting to start for a very long time. Roses in July. Brenda from Brenda and the Cereal Starter. She start, showed this a while ago and I just like, whoa, and <laughs> I went looking for it. I found it at um, the shop in Fenton, Michigan. Is it, I think it's called Stitches and Things. And um, they had one. And so I've been wanting to start that for a very long time. Uh, also, we've got, I don't think, that, I won't leave this out just for Easter, but the rabbit, I don't know if I can show. Here we go. The Rabbit Alphabet Sampler by JBW has been something I've been wanting to start. So this is something I hope, I hope, I hope, which leads me to one of my, there's a lot of market releases. So, you know, this is not the only one, but this one, I saw Judy show this on her channel and I was like, whoo, that's totally happening. So uh, I think it's called an elegant, an elegant alphabet. Yes, an elegant alphabet. I'm gonna put that up here so you can see it by JBW. Uh, birds, pink. Yes, thank you. So I'll be I'll be getting that one, Judy. Um, okay, and then the last, I think this is the last thing. I have a fun new style that I. So when I was at the attic, the, the go round, you heard me mention uh, that I saw Michelle, and Michelle. Um, so it's um, desert underscore stitcher, I believe, on Instagram, and. Uh, she saw me show this as one of my purchases last time and she said, hey, I have that. And we were just chatting back and forth and I said, and before you know it, you know how it goes, right? I have that, let's start it, let's do a out. we're stitching it together. So we're gonna start this on um, the 1st of March, March 1st. 
And I have chosen my fabric. Michelle is going to stitch on straw by Weeks Dye Works. I actually had a piece of the called for vintage autumn gold, but again, you know, any number of, um, I don't know, this is, you can even stitch it on that Duxbury. That's what Michelle was wondering if I was going to do that because it's kind of grungy and, and I am, okay, let me, I am going to make a couple of changes to this. So I'm not planning on stitching the lettering, the words at the bottom. I'm going to just bring the border up and this fun character here, I'm actually going to just repeat the basket from this side and I'm going to put it on this side as well. So I won't be stitching him. Those are just my personal choices. I, I'm sure Michelle's probably going to stitch it exactly as charted. So uh, if you're on Instagram, be sure to go and follow her. And, and I, we didn't pick a hashtag, Michelle, but we could keep it very simple. Hashtag MA Badger 1870 SAL. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find something. And I've just, I've already got the flosses ready to go. So that is uh, coming up here pretty quickly. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited I, for all of these fun new starts. Um, I guess that's, you know, that's, that's a lot. So we'll go ahead and leave it there. I have one more thing I forgot to show in the beginning. My friend, Deborah, my wonderful friend, um, paper crafter, and she sent me this beautiful Valentine's card that she made. So thank you, Deborah. I love getting those in the mail. Okay. Now, you know, I didn't even look at my notes. Let me look very quickly because I really think I, I remembered everything this time, but, um, it's good just to double check. <sighs> Okay, I think we're good. So I am going to share some scripture as always, and I hope that you'll stay. But that is going to be all the stitching. Um, I hope that you're enjoying all the things that you're stitching on and have lots of fun new projects maybe planned. Um, I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care. Okay, so for those of you who are staying with me, um, today I'm going to share some scriptures. They're all going to be the New King James Version, and they are like personal encouragement for me. They're prayers, um, things that I ask the Holy Spirit to help me with, to work on me, to continue to grow me, um, you know, this sanctification process, the lifelong process um, of trying to, you know, always be more Christ-like, to, to grow and be more Christ-like. And so these are prayers and encouragements. They're also reminders of how to put uh, my faith into shoe leather um, and just one that is a personal uh, memory verse for me that, again, is just a really good encouragement for me. So let me go ahead and read these with you. Psalm 42, 1. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. Philippians 2, 3. Let nothing be done through selfish, amb selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Colossians 3, 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Proverbs 18, 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. And Mark 12, 30 and 31. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these.